What's up everyone, it's Dave Wallace from the Medal of Honor channel and I'm here doing another sideshow for you. This is going to be one of those challenges that you see. This is called the Happy Halloween Vinyl Challenge. You can hashtag that and come up with more uh, people doing this. This is an Instagram challenge. It's 31 sub challenges and basically it's actually made to be something that you post a photo of each day in the month of October. Uh, which I'm going to do. So uh, if you'd like to follow along, um, you can join me. Well, for, for one thing, you can just follow the hashtag, of course, but you can join me and follow what I'm doing on Instagram with at Medal of Honor Show. And, uh, you know, I try and put, you know, some funny memes and shit like that up there all the time. But uh, also, anytime I come across an Instagram challenge that's going to be about vinyl, then of course I'm going to try and jump in there and be a part of it. It's just fun, you know, so something to do for you vinyl collectors out there. Uh, but I also would like to make a show version of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do half of the list now and then in a couple days I'll post the other half. Uh, it gives me a time to you know make it shorter shows but also you know talk a little bit more about them besides just a post. Um, and if you are doing you know vinyl challenges yourself, uh, if you're on, got a vinyl YouTube show and you want to be a part of this, uh, absolutely jump in. You know, hopefully other people want to try it. It's a lot of fun. This challenge was put out uh, on Instagram uh, by an Instagram page called Vinyl and Feet. So, yeah, everyone's got their kink, I guess. Uh, so that's good. But uh, it's actually a fun page. It's got a lot of cool stuff on there. And, uh, you know, they, they came up with this cool challenge uh, all based on uh, Halloween movies and stuff that they uh, made this challenge out of. So this is going to be fun. Uh, also, uh, just another shout out because of where I actually saw it from. Uh, I saw the post shared by a page called uh, Vinyl Slut, which is uh, <clears throat> photographs of some very beautiful bodies and uh, holding up some classic albums. So that's what I call art, folks. So uh, yeah, check those uh, pages out. There's all kinds of cool vinyl pages uh, on Instagram and, uh, you know, all kinds of cool YouTube shows happen about vinyl and, you know, hopefully some of my friends out there want to get in on some of this stuff as well. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Like I said, I'm going to do half of this now uh, and half of it in, uh, in a couple days, maybe a week. Um, these are all, each one of these are based on uh, movies, some, usually some kind of horror movie because it's Halloween. Um, there are three or four of these where I kind of missed the mark or maybe didn't really have what they wanted. But I wanted to make sure that I was still participating, so I came up with what I feel is a reasonable uh, swap. So we'll we'll see how that goes, see what you think about it. But anyway, here we go. Let me show you how this works, okay? Uh, this is the post, as I saw the first 15. Uh, and then uh, for the second episode, I'll show you the next post anyway. So let's get a start. Uh, we're gonna start, uh, number one is called Red Rum. And uh, red rum, uh, any red vinyl that you have to show. Okay, so I thought this would be a really appropriate one for me to start off with. It's the Satanic Mass. Ooh! And it's Anton LaVey performed this Satanic Mass. This was in 1969, uh, and it was actually on a Friday the 13th in the, uh, September. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is the, uh, the red vinyl, kind of red clear vinyl. Let me pull that out there. Oh, the Satanic Mass. And it's even got Satanic Bible reading on the back as well. So anyway, that's number one, red vinyl. <clears throat> number two is Skeleton Key. This is any album uh, with a skull or a skeleton on it. Now, I collect metal. Finding a skull on one of my albums is like finding a record inside one of the jackets. I mean, yeah, it happens. So I chose my uh, one of my most recent ones. Uh, this is Call of the Void. Look at that. That's some badass art there. Some really cool skulls happening. Uh, these guys are really cool. This is sort of um, a death and doom, but it definitely has uh, elements of thrash uh, and even some hardcore mixed in with it too. So super badass album. Really dig that. Number three is Vinyl of the Dead. Uh, this is uh, actually supposed to be uh, your favorite deceased artist. Well, <laughs> we all know, let's see, I got one on the wall right there. We all know if you watch my show that my favorite band of all time is Rush. 
And uh, it turns out on this list of 31 different things, you're gonna see a lot of rush, okay? Just warn you ahead of time. So, uh, you know, Neil, of course, uh, definitely a, a big effect on me and uh, very painful when he died, you know? But anyway, uh, so for this particular one, I'm doing Hold Your Fire. The reason I'm doing Hold Your Fire is because I wanna make sure you get a variety and there's a lot of rush on my list, so yeah. Hold Your Fire, Vinyl of the Dead. Number four is Jaws. And so of course what they want is water. And it doesn't say it's gotta be an ocean or in shark fins, it just says water. So, rush! This is permanent waves. And there's the, uh, there's some flood water and of course, you know, the, uh, the uh, tsunami crashing over there. So there's some rush for number four. Number five is called blood splatter. And it's actually any uh, splatter vinyl. Now I actually have quite a few that have like a blood splatter pattern. Uh, some you actually might see later, but um, my I wanted to show my favorite uh, vinyl splatter. Right? Uh, this band, uh, Temple of Void. Uh, fuck, I love this album. Uh, this little no, I got it on Bandcamp, so they they sent a little thank you and autograph there. Um, this album, you're gonna find it if you watch uh, throughout the year. You'll see at the end of the year, it's gonna be in my top five uh, favorites. Uh, but anyway, uh, the vinyl that they sent me is just beautiful. Um, this is a uh, sea foam, uh, blue and white water wash, and then there's gold splatter in there. So something a little different. Like I said, I've got plenty of red blood metal, you know, but I just thought this was a, just a really pretty album. So there you go. Number six is, of course, Number of the Beast, and it's any Iron Maiden uh, album. It says a uh, al album or song that scares you. Um, none of them scare me. But uh, probably when I was a kid, this one might have, especially you know, growing up in a religious home. It's the number of the beast. Yep. Iron Maiden, number of the beast. That's an easy pick for number six. <clears throat> okay, number seven is the Strange Land Challenge, and that one is an album cover with tattoos or piercings. Um, you know, so, so didn't really have any that were necessarily the piercing or tattoo was so much forefront. I could have easily picked, you know, a hair band that just had piercing, pierced ears, you know, hanging. But uh, I decided to go a little bit more dark. It's Halloween, right? Uh, so literal piercings. This is decapitated anti-cult. Check out the uh, actual piercings, nails piercing the hands there. So I went literal. Hope that's cool. Number eight is Jeepers Creepers, and this is a perfect road trip album. Now, again, that's gonna be subjective. You know, you're not gonna think the same thing as me. When I'm driving, I do listen to a lot of variety while I'm driving, um, and uh, I like, of course, something that's gonna, uh, you know, especially when it gets late at night, I want something I can sing along with that helps keep me awake. And so I went with, oh shit, some Rush. This is Power Windows. And this is one of my all-time favorite albums of theirs just because this is about the time period that I came in uh, to appreciating Rush, this and Hold Your Fire. And um, you know, it is definitely a keyboard heavy album, I'll give you that, but some of the best bass licks on this album, just incredible and a lot of catchy choruses to sing along with. So when I'm driving, Power Windows. Okay, this is one of those ones where I kind of failed. Um, number nine is Winchester's Supernatural, and the challenge is any Led Zeppelin album. Uh, I used to love Led Zeppelin when I was first discovering rock and metal uh, in the 80s, and I, you know, my first band played a few Led Zeppelin songs. We played rock and roll, we played lack of, uh, or not, uh, communication breakdown, um, and you know what, um, just, I don't know, Maybe I burnt out on them, but I don't really, I still respect Led Zeppelin a lot. And if it's on the radio, I would totally listen to it. But I just don't have any Zeppelin in my vinyl collection at the moment. So I wouldn't pass up a, a free Zeppelin record or you know a cheap used one, but uh, it's just not on my list of things to buy right now. But I gotta participate, so uh, anybody that I can think of that's ever been confused for Led Zeppelin, fucking rush. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this album, when it was first played, uh, in Cleveland on WMMS in 1974. Uh, they played the song Working Man on the radio, got a bunch of phone calls of people saying, hey, is this the new Led Zeppelin album? How can I get it? And they had to say, no, it's actually a band called Rush. So, and if you listen to this, this is with John Rutsey. This is just, just before they got peered. So, 
Um, it definitely sounds very, very Zeppelin-ish. It's not Zeppelin, I get it, but it's what I got. All right, number 10 is Pennywise. This is an album with clowns or carnival music. Uh, now, I didn't have any uh, clown records covers, which is kind of surprising, actually, in the metal category. Uh, but I did find uh, that I did have something with a little bit of carnival music in it. Uh, it's Astro Creep 2000. And uh, the song Grease Paint and Monkey Brains uh, has a little bit of a carnival music at the beginning of it, the intro. So, fucking great album. Number 11 is The Shining, and it has to do with uh, twins, you know, the two twins. Come play with us, Danny. Uh, so, uh, two, basically, if you have duplicate albums. So, I got two copies of Boston. I don't know why I have them, but look, I mean, they actually even wore out the same way. Um, the vinyl is actually the same uh, label and everything, so not sure how I got two of these, but come play with us, Danny. Number 12 is the Rocky Horror Picture Show, where basically it's just about uh, men wearing makeup. Uh, so, uh, pretty easy when it comes to hairband. I'll go with the Motley Crue, so look at the back cover there, check out Vince. Woo, he's pretty. Yeah, whatever, men in makeup. Number 13 is called Martez 13, and it has to do with an album cover that's just creepy or sinister. Again, metal collector here. I mean, I got tons of stuff that probably someone could consider that. Uh, I decided to go with something uh, a little bit different here, so I think it's fairly dark and creepy. This is Karak Angren, and this is uh, where the corpses sink forever. Um, you know, a lot of people have done the whole uh, black metal uh, face corpse paint. Uh, but I don't know, you know, it looks pretty fucking creepy on there. Check that out. And uh, good job of that. And then the back cover, of course, is pretty fucked up also, right? So, yeah, very cool. Great band, love that album. So, yeah, that's number 13. Number 14 is called Bloody Valentine, and this has to do with uh, uh, an album that reminds you of an ex. Yeah, well, all right. Um, if I hadn't dated that psycho goth bitch, then I wouldn't have discovered typo negative. Uh, or at least I wouldn't have known that I liked them. I, I was familiar with them, you know. I mean, after a chick and you're trying to get in her pants, then you're trying to listen to what kind of shit she likes. Turns out, I really like them. Uh, actually, my favorite probably would have been October Rust. I just don't have it on vinyl yet. It's on my list. Uh, you know, so Love You To Death would have been it. But uh, yeah, this, this album here, uh, it's definitely a good one as well. So, typo negative. This is world coming down. And finally, for this half of the uh, challenge, uh, number 15 is Candyman uh, and its favorite greatest hits album. Okay, this is another one that I kind of failed on because I don't collect greatest hits albums. Usually every song that's on a greatest hits album I want to have in the original album and usually have, you know, all that comes with it. Um, if I were to try to, you know, fulfill a whole run of one band, um, maybe after I got everything of theirs, then I would want to go after, uh, you know, some greatest hit stuff. That will be the case, of course, with Rush. Um, I'm still collecting some of the stuff, but some of it's kind of hard to get. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to be thinking about is uh, there any greatest hits albums that they put out. But I thought, you know, I got to, again, participate. You know, what else is considered a greatest hits? But you know, what they play live. So I just chose a live album for now. Uh, Exit Stage Left, a uh, whole lot of hit songs of theirs on there. It's a great album, so yeah, why not? That's what I got. Okay, so that's it for the first half. And uh, stay tuned because we'll be getting to the second half and uh, probably about a week from now. Uh, in between two episodes, I'm gonna have a, a new show coming out called Locally Sourced. So stay tuned for that. And uh, I'll see you soon. Until then, keep your horns up, keep the needle down.